Welcome to the Emerge Podcast, where Ronnie Doss shares insights regarding life, leadership, and personal development. For more of our resources, visit RonnieDoss.com. Now, let's join the podcast. Hi there, this is Ronnie Doss. My team and I are really excited that you decided to stop by. You know, I've spent the last decade working with individuals from all over the world to help them transform their thinking and enhance their life experience. Not only do I train teams at some of the most successful companies and organizations in the world, I offer coaching programs specifically designed for individuals much like yourself that are committed to increasing productivity and achieving personal goals. I've had powerful mentors along the way that have taught me principles that absolutely shifted how I was living my life, and those principles I want to share with you. My passion is people, and there's nothing more exciting than seeing a life transformed for the better. This is what I've decided to give my life to. So hop over to RonnieDoss.com to check out some of the video programs I personally designed to help you build stronger relationships, improve your communication skills, and develop an intentional mindset. I know these resources will assist you in finding a greater sense of purpose, staying focused on what matters, and breaking through old mental barriers. Get ready. This is your time. So I did a team session today, and it was just an open Q&A. We were discussing some of the topics I had shared at a conference I spoke at recently, and I answered some questions, and so I thought it'd be great to share some of these questions with you and how I answered them, because if you're like many of the people that I'm talking to right now, you probably feel like you have a lot on your plate, or you feel like you're being stretched, whether you're homeschooling your kids, or whether your schedule of how you work is different, whether your pay has changed, your employment's changed, whether your physical health is changing because you've been home, (laughs) whatever that is, you may feel like you've got a lot on your plate, and so... I want to give you a couple of things that I was asked uh, this afternoon, and I think they're great questions. I think questions are always great. I've always said that if you want to move into a better level, you just need to develop better questions. And so these are some good questions. And the first one that I got um, had to do with how to handle people when you're talking to somebody who's pretty locked on to what they believe. Maybe they feel like they already know it all, or maybe they're just really passionate about their perspective. You know, right now, when you look at masks, uh, potential vaccines, quarantines, when you look at who needs to be the president, who we need to vote in, why, there's so many hot topics that I wonder sometimes if they're not diversions. I wonder if there's something else going on that we don't really see, but maybe there is. I don't want to get into that, though, but what happens when you deal with somebody that's absolutely so passionate about their perspective that they're not open? Well, first things first, what I always know, when somebody is really heated about a topic, Usually it's because they have attached to that opinion because they think that that opinion gives them in some way value or superiority. Like when somebody locks on to a political party and they argue for that side almost to the death, like absolutely, and they don't know all the details. It's like the reason they've attached to that argument is that argument gives them a feeling of empowerment. And if I can argue for this one side and this one side then wins, then Obviously, I've gotten my way. I've made progress towards my overall end game picture that I think everything is going to be better because of. And then I get to get all the benefits. And so people stand for these arguments and they act like they know it all. I think it's an overcompensation. Anytime anybody's yelling and screaming about religion or yelling and screaming about politics or telling everybody else how they're doing it wrong, I believe in my heart it's an overcompensation for something to where they feel like they're out in other areas. And so they overcompensate, they bow up, they feel like they have to prove something. And so when you deal with somebody who won't take feedback or they're not open to having an open discussion about anything, a lot of times it's because they've locked onto something on a deeper level that pacifies some wound or some feeling that they have that maybe they don't want to address. You know, some people, all it takes is saying one thing to them and it's like a hair trigger and boom, they're emotionally all over the place. They're charged up, like they're offended, they're mad, and they want to argue. Well, that means that whatever that thing is that that flipped their trigger, so to speak, that thing controls them because something on the inside is unresolved. And so how we handle that is, number one, is we must come from a place of humility so that we don't judge their know-it-all attitude, meaning I can't know it all about them being the person that acts like they know it all because it's really easy to fight energy with the same energy and all you get is the same thing. And so how can you help to create a solution here? Well, what I always do is I look at the value set for somebody. If I know that they're posturing themselves as a know-it-all because maybe there's something underneath this underlying issue with them that's unresolved, then the first thing I do is I go, hey, I want to come from a place of humility. 
I don't want to be a know-it-all either. I don't want to have to bow up and pretend like I have all my answers for them and yell and scream and give them all my wisdom. What I want to do is come from a place of humility and know that I don't know everything about them. That energy in and of itself is an openness in a dialogue to say, hey, I'm going to stop judging them. They, their, their perspective may not meet my preference the way that I want, but I can still stand in a place of openness and humility. The second thing is that I can be grateful for this person even when I'm frustrated or maybe I think they know it all because I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here on this planet engaging with someone because maybe this encounter can teach me something that I don't know. And if it can teach me something that I don't know about myself or some underlying thing that has I have a charge on that maybe is causing me to pretend like my perspective is better than their perspective and that I always need to be the one that teaches them something, then maybe that's something in me that's unresolved. You know, I heard this quote that said, everybody wants to be a teacher because they're afraid of what happens if they ever become a student. And so we got to be careful that we're not the one who's always trying to teach just because a person doesn't act the way that we think they should act. If we can come from this place of humility and then gratitude, I think it helps to dissolve some of that energy that may be keeping us from connecting with the people that we're working with. And then the second thing was a question that didn't really have much to do with this, but I think it's, it's applicable to where many of us are right now is how do you know when you need to add something else to your life? You know, my mentor that I worked for, he always used to say, hey, if you think you got too much on your plate, you just need a bigger plate. Well, I think the context, what he meant was, is there's always more and we can keep stretching. But I also think that in the society that we live in now, in the cultural expectation of us, is that you got to perform, you got to outdo, you got to be an influencer, you got to have people following you, your voice has to be heard by the masses, or else you're insignificant. And I think when you think you got to keep adding things to your plate more, 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 next, 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 what happens is that becomes like a virus that eats you up from the inside, and it can wind up killing all the good things that you're supposed to be about. Next is a virus. If you always have to live with next, thinking the next thing is going to complete you, then chances are you're not going to be healthy. And so the answer that I gave this person was this one. I said, for me right now, where Ronnie Doss is at in his life, at the age of 45, doing a lot of things, I don't spend a lot of time on things that I'm uncertain about. Right now, it's either an absolute yes or it's an absolute no. If I can't say, yes, this is what I need to add to my plate, then I say no to it. I don't ponder for a lot because I have enough going on right now that I know I have chosen my course of action. I've chosen the things that I'm passionate about, and I want to work and put more passion and more energy into the things that I know are going to get me a great amount of return, me staying focused on those instead of always trying to add something else to my life that I think is going to make my life a lot richer just because it seems to be the norm of having so many irons in the fire. Yes, I think we need different streams of income. Yes, I think we need different hobbies. Yes, I think we need different relationships that we can lean on, lean into, learn from, have great dialogue with. However, I don't think we need to keep adding things to our plate unless we're pretty clear that it's going to give us more peace and help us to grow in a healthy way. There's a difference between growing and swelling. You can add things to your life that can cause you to feel stressed, worried, sick. And when people get sick, sometimes they break a bone, there's an infection, things can swell. Growth is not like swelling. Swelling, it looks like it's getting bigger, things are expanding. But what I have seen is that when your circle gets smaller, a lot of times it gets to a better quality. It becomes stronger. Just because it's smaller doesn't mean it's not stronger. Just because you lose certain things in your life doesn't mean your life is not working better in a healthier way. You let go of some of the attachments to all the things that you feel like you need to add and ask yourself, can I add this to my life and keep my peace? Because if I can't, it's just not worth it. When you have peace, you have peace of mind, you're grounded, you're healthier, you're taking deeper breaths, you're not stressed as much, you're not worried as much, you're gonna rest better at night. I believe that this is the way toward a good, long-term, successful life. I'm not trying to win everything right now. I'm not trying to exchange my future for something that I want in this moment. I'm trying to grow towards something better. And I think that if you are willing to come from that place when you're making a decision of whether or not to add something to your life, I think you'll feel better about what you produce in the long run. So dealing with people, right? They think you're dealing with somebody that knows it all right? Be humble, be grateful. And when it comes to adding things to your plate right now, what I would say is if it's not an absolute yes, make it an absolute no. This is Ronnie Doss. You guys have an awesome day. I look forward to talking to you again very, very soon. Take care.